Okay, here we are. We, we believe section 25 of uh, Call of Cthulhu Down Darker Trails slash uh, Deadlands crossover. Uh, and we're on a Saturday night just after a shooting. Uh, I believe it's June 2nd, 1876. So, Dr. Trout and Edward telling us you were having a leisurely evening meal discussing what to do with the leisures. Walt was making his rounds in the saloons, calming people down after the events of the day concerning the mud-like people who suddenly showed up knocking on the door of the old bank. That nobody Who else should have noticed looked awfully similar to uh, recently deceased townspeople. Yeah, he, I didn't tell anyone that. Yeah, I, I believe I believe Walt's the only person who uh, picked up on that. Uh, Gustav, you're kind of recovering from uh, the shock and a mild want to pick that weapon back up again. No, it's more than mild. <laughs> and Christopher and Vance, um, not too sure what you guys are doing uh, in the evening. No, well, you went shopping. We're shopping. <laughs> yeah. Shopping to the crazy man. I'm sure, I'm sure you're largely done shopping now. Yes. So, um, and I believe you both were in effect told that uh, uh, your your requested items. I know, what, uh, Christopher, you were interested in a pair of boots. Yep. And there was a snake in my boot. Vance, what what were you looking at? You were looking at He's something. He's freaking trying to copy me. Getting no, getting a vest made. Oh yes, that's right. A a resistant vest. A resistant vest, yes. Yes. Uh, and you got a a swath of a swath to to uh, play with. Try out with, yes. Uh, probably not in town. You know, mid to late evening, uh, but uh, something to goof around with uh, in the morning, I would suspect. Um, so. Yeah, okay, so Gustav, Christopher, and Vance, all three of you all, please make, we're going to make a, uh, da, 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 we are going to make clown noises. Everybody, everybody <laughs> make, or yeah, those three, uh, uh, please make an idea roll. A deal roll I can do. Is this the people that went to the store? Um, idea roll? Yeah, the two people went to the store oh, plus Gustav. Yeah. Hard success. Hard success. Nice. Gustav. Same. Same. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's what you you, all, you each of you needed. Uh, you hear a quick exchange of gunfire, which all three of you all um, have been in sufficient. Uh, <laughs> situations where, uh oh, that was probably, um, you know, a, a, you know, this isn't a long shootout. This isn't a robbery of a bank. This is two people trying to gun each other down. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like a drunken brawl. <laughs> Wait, one of them sounded like a really prissy gun. Maybe that was Walt. <laughs> uh, but just two, two gunshots. Uh, you guys would drive yourself mad if you reacted to every single uh, gunshot that occurs in town. Um, but you are aware that some gunshots have been fired that are are probably, uh, as I say, some sort of uh, uh, a duel. <laughs> duel of some sort. Uh, if you wish to react, you certainly can. If not... Well, perhaps the Undertaker will have another job. Undertaker's always busy. <laughs> but it wasn't near me. <laughs> no, not particularly. <laughs> so don't much care. All right, fair enough. Um, well, you see uh, uh, the, the sheriff and the deputy. Um, well, actually, the uh, the sheriff comes out uh, to you um, very shortly after the uh, 
sheriff and, and deputy gathered up um, Mr. Travers and took him to jail real quick. And uh, the sheriff goes, Go ahead, some paperwork for you. Help fill out tomorrow morning. <laughs> Do you know where the doctor is? Uh, he's either at, in his bank building, the one that the the the, the dust to dust people went to, or he's back at his uh, prob. Well, wait a minute. He might actually know if he's not at his office or at the bank. You know, he's probably at a saloon. You know, maybe having something to drink after the trying evening he's had. As have all of us. Yeah. He does eat like enjoy eating in comfort. Yes, he does like his food. He does like his baby back ribs. Right. He kind of nods and goes, "All right, all right." And uh, he goes back up to the boardwalk in front of the sheriff's office and talks to two younger fellows who immediately go running off. Um. Oh, Sheriff, by the way, I still plan, since I'm uninjured, I still was planning on talking at the church, try to settle things a little bit after talk a little, put a little perspective on what, what what just happened this evening. Not, I won't focus on myself, but uh, you know the earlier incident that involved a lot of gunfights and disturbing scenes. Good, good. That'll, that'll hopefully calm the nerves of the town a little bit. It depends on how I roll. But... That's how I roll. Um, All right, Sheriff, if there's anything else you need from me. Um, actually, uh, well, you sent some runners to look for Dr. Trout. I was going to go look for him, too, so maybe I'll, I'll also poke around. Okay, you were aware that uh, the doctor and Mr. Tungas were having a nice meal, I, I believe, Back at the the Empire, I believe you were having a, a nice, nice meal as opposed to and a I wasn't invited. filling meal. You know, Sheriff, I I have you know, come come to think of it, I think uh, I think he said he's gonna with my new associate, uh, Mr. Chilling Hasta. I think he's gonna go to the Empire and get a nice steak dinner. So maybe if you want to head over, we can go. I think that's there's a good chance we'll find him there. All right, let's make it quick. Um, right. And you start hoofing it over there. Okay. In, meanwhile, um, Edward and the doctor, you all had a leisurely meal. Uh, have you discussed mm -hmm. a, a plan or anything for your ledgers? <clears throat> I'm happy to translate them. Uh, it's going take a little bit of time. We've got to work our way through them. Yeah. Uh, the plan is to go through and take good notes and... and translate them before we go opening our mess and anything. We did we did put the plates up on the walls, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we we feel somewhat we feel comfortable that that hopefully uh there's um that that, that whatever protections they provide are in place. Yeah, I mean you've followed the appropriate directions. Um so you're not feeling somewhat confident at least in that. Uh, Edward, you estimate that given given pretty much a, a full day, uh, you should be able to have the ledgers largely translated and so not not to just have names and physical descriptions, but to have names, physical descriptions, and whatever notes uh, about those items uh, translated. Uh, uh, fully so you know it'll take you know six hours you think maybe a little bit more it kind of depends if you hit a rough spot or not okay um but you know you could either opt to burn uh quote unquote uh, midnight oil or you know starting that tomorrow morning what have you that would be up to you um But just as you're finishing up uh, a, a little bit of a dessert and apartefe and perhaps a small cigar or something along those lines, uh, you see uh, Walter and the, oh, the swishers. sheriff come walking uh, into uh, the restaurant. And you see Walt kind of uh, gesture 
to you all, uh, to the uh, sheriff. Yeah, it looks like something's up. Carl, check the chat for me. Yeah, I see it. Okay, good. Sheriff, how can I help you? Well, uh, our uh, local news reporter here got himself into a bit of a scruffle. Well, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't look injured. I don't know how that could have happened. <laughs> Pure <laughs> luck. Pure luck. Well, surprising things do happen. Uh, actually, the person on the the, re the the receiving end of the pain was uh, somebody else. Uh, and I think we're going to have to Maybe uh, have a bit of lead yanked out of him. All right. Bring him. Uh, if uh, if Walt shot him, it probably shot him in the butt, right? <laughs> uh, it's actually a, a shoulder wound. All right. Yeah. Because it was a fair fight. <laughs> sure, I thought all I right. was going to well, die. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll make my way over there. If you have him brought over, that'd be great. All right. And he kind of starts hustling uh, out of there. Um, Edward? Um, well, I could come along or I could start on those journal, on those uh, documents. I mean, that you mean that work in the in the bank, in the old bank building? Yeah. Yep, that'd be yeah. if you're okay if you're if you're okay doing that without without any company, then uh, please don't sell me anything nasty. I think it'll be okay, and I don't want to take up a whole day or risk us all separating again. So, all right, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, I learned the dangers of that. Somewhat. You're right. still in danger That's if you're the danger, around. The danger is when you wander off. And also when I stick around. <laughs> when you stick around. We're pretty much bad news. No matter you start what. heading back to the uh, to the old bank, uh, remembering that you have to go to the back door because the front door is propped closed uh, because right. it got smashed open, right? Yes. Uh, and Dr. Trout and Walt, you start heading to the good doctor's office. Uh, I don't want to set this guy off again. <laughs> I'll try to hang out. I'll try to um, when they bring him over, the the person who was shot. I'm just gonna kind of try to, you know, be in the background and you know not be front and center. So I don't want to set him off again. Okay. Because I think that's a reasonable thing to be worried about, given how he acted the last time he saw. Me. So I'll and now in. that I've shot him, we have a bit of a personal history now. <laughs> Is he already in the waiting room? Uh, yeah, yeah. Since the sheriff's office is, is really just two doors down from from the, from your uh, or from the doctor uh, doctor's right. office. So who is it? Uh, it it is Carrie. Uh, um, Travers. Or is that uh, the Carrie, host Carrie Travers? Yeah. No, oh, he's the guy that got into the tussle with my neighbor. Well, uh, at least according to the wall, that's correct. All right. Uh, Gustav, you, you had been a little shak shaken up from the events of, of the day and uh, had retired back to um, uh, the, the, the boarding house. Maybe t take a relaxing bath, kind of gather your, your, your thoughts, that sort of thing. Um, I think... You know, started getting into the evening, got a bit peckish for the gunfire, raised his eyebrow on that. Um, got to thinking, probably need to check up on everybody, make sure nothing stupid happened. Uh, and, you know, maybe maybe hit the, the saloons, make a little bit of money. Um, give me a, a, another idea roll, please. Or, no, my apologies. Give me a scan, please. A uh, very hard success. Wow. Okay. Um, it's amazing. <laughs> you notice as you uh, walk out of the front entrance onto the boardwalk. Um, to the left of you, it never really occurred to you before, but I think it, now that you think about it, it's been there for quite a while, but it is now broken on the ground 
a small crystalline wind chime. Ah, the wind chime. Uh, but it appears to have been broken. It, it's now kind of shattered up into pieces on the ground. So, why does that sound familiar? What was it? There was something about the wind chimes. Somebody's not going to get sleep. <laughs> something about the wind chimes at the boarding house and something we saw somewhere else. Uh, it's been a while. There's some kind of a link. Uh, that would be me who's had the wind chime fetish. I just hate wind chimes. I think anybody who likes wind chimes should be killed. But that's my personal opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you feel that way about people who no, they really feel. <laughs> people whose hat letter names have a letter A in it. Also true. Um, so you proceed. I mean, it's it, you're like, you know, one of the guys is talking about this. Um. It's up to you what to do, you know what to do with that information or, or what have you, but you know that one of the guys was talking about that, uh, and I guess you you probably proceed to. I mean, the the general gathering place is, is largely you know up until recently has been uh, to the gem saloon, um, but as I say, you know, it's been a while since you've done any gambling. This isn't this isn't. Uh, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, where you dive into a a dungeon and find a chest of gold, you gotta occasionally actually make some money uh, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, so, I don't. Um, up to you what to do with with the mid to late evening. So I'm I am alone at this point. You are alone at this point. Hmm. <laughs> 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 There's all kinds of bad things. Um, okay, well, I do have, I am the card shark, and I do have pretty good gambling. So let me go to the maybe saloon, and maybe if I can't scare up a few dollars. That does remind me, actually, check, you can check your, your gambling skill. I did have you do some gambling. If I recall, you were, you were ahead by 50 bucks. Oh, uh, that's right. I remember that. So, and 50 bucks is a lot of money back then, so. A hell of a lot of money. Yeah, okay. Succeed that gambling. I don't even know how much money I have. It's been so long since I checked it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too much of a yeah. jerk, jerk when it comes to, to okay. money in, the, in these kind of games. Uh, looks, like, looks like I had $68 as of June 15th. Well, you doubled your, almost doubled your money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Walt and Gabriel, uh, Gabriel, you get to the office and you see a um, Terry there again. Uh, your your favorite drunk. Um, so it himself. Have I ever met this guy? No. So I'm going to ask him. I'm going to use my either my persuade or my psychology. Both right. Of which, both of which are thirty. Um. So he's going to say, hey, what, what on earth happened to you? Just to see what his perspective is on what happened. All right, go ahead and do that roll. Because I know because I know Walt was involved, but I don't know the details. And sort of I'm mildly curious to see if I can get, get some interesting different perspective. Okay, go ahead and roll. Uh, um, I'll burn 10 luck to succeed. So much for my new luck. <laughs> <laughs> 56 now. It doesn't last long, does it? The way I've been rolling. Um, do you uh, increase his medication before doing anything? If I think that it will be helpful, I could probably do a little bit of that, as long as I wasn't going to harm him. No, no. I mean, you'd probably be medicating him a little bit anyway, so you can dig into his shoulder without him, you know. Well, I certainly could certainly could offer him some medicinal uh, liquor to help along. Yeah, a little whiskey will ease the pain. Of course, he well, would probably appreciate that. He probably has some serious tolerance too at this point. Well, he already re reeks of of, of, of cheap uh, whiskey and rye, so. Well, I'm uh, not trying to modify his mood. I'm trying to get him uh, to be more appreciative. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm not trying to sedate the guy. I guess. No, I mean you just. I mean you 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 want to administer a a, a local 
as it were for for his shoulder because you're, you're gonna have to, to do a little digging on that um but certainly as part of your your doctor's trade uh you do attempt to uh build a rapport with your patient and such um matter of fact um well, did you enter the, the quote unquote, operating room with the doctor or did you stay in the waiting room? Remember I said I was going to hang back so he can't see me. So, okay. So, so, I mean, I'll be in the background visible, but unless he like sits up and looks at me intently, I should be blending in the background. So are, are I'm, you... I'm, I'm there, but I'm not, should not be in his direct line of sight. So Larry is not my assistant. So he, I generally don't have him involved when I'm doing surgery. Right. I was at the door. I didn't come in. Like I said, I didn't come into the surgery. I'm at the door at the most. Are you using your jacket to help you blend in more? Sure. Okay. If one has it, one uses it. One moment. Well, go ahead and roll a percentage. Uh, you don't ro want to roll a 100 as it is right now. Uh, 50 on the dot. Okay, no worries. Uh, your your jacket subtly starts to uh, blend in uh, subtly colors that start matching the, the painted walls. Um, nothing overt, uh, but certainly makes your presence less noticeable. Uh, I mean, you don't want to look bizarre with, you know, a, a, a you know, a doorstop going down, down your, 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 you know what I mean, going, That's you know, what the hell, but, you know, um, so, doctor, as you, as you sort of start to prepare the patient and, you know, you're, you're messing with your, your, your scalpel and, and forceps and, getting some gauze and some cat gut ready for sewing uh, lots of uh, uh, as clean as you can get uh, cotton uh, towels and such because uh, there's going to be some blood uh, with this kind of a thing um, let's say you, you start your 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 rapporting with uh, Terry and um, you get the general impression it's really more through sort of drips and drabs uh, that Terry thought for sure that that reporter guy was going to take care of the evil at the farmstead. Um, he thought that um, he would bring holy peace to, to repress the, uh, the demon that had been conjured there. Wait, are you talking about the house next to mine? Mm -hmm. Uh, Travers has no idea who he's like, I don't know who the neighbors are. Oh, I just bought a house out near. Blah, 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 blah. Well, you might be neighbors. Huh. Yeah, I heard the house burned down, but it didn't look like it. Oh, uh, Woody. That's right. Wait. Set him off. Set him off. That's what we need. <laughs> I gotta, I yeah, he starts off. getting agitated, and he, he's convinced that it was burned down. And he'll burn it down again if he needs to be, if it needs to be. How would you put how would you put some demon at peace six demon bag holy water no you uh, sent christopher uh, barnett that's how you put him that's how you put him at peace. <laughs> the old sack shooter dose um, dose we should call him dose dose wait, i'm gonna so i so I, I do have a 30 psychology so i'm gonna keep him i'm not i'm not gonna i'm gonna pace myself so the questions I ask are not going to be, you know, if I see him get agitated, I'll sort of revert to some sort of pleasant. Yeah, you, you, you deflect and revert because uh, you, you got su sufficient success in the say The medication's helping a little bit as well. Um, you get that, that he returned um, 
quote unquote to make sure they were dead and that's when he found saw the demon and he said he he unloaded his Winchester into it and thought for sure he put it down went to visit again and the house was back and the demon was there again What's the demon look like? Uh, Does he look it, like a man? Or? Takes him a while to describe it, but um... by the way, can I hear this? Because I'm I am near the door and I do have a really good listen. And I'm in. Uh, Walt, go ahead and give me a listen roll. Oh, oh, hell yeah! Okay. Uh, as he <laughs> describes it, you get a little gurge in your stomach because it matches what you thought was a scarecrow in the, in the field that you saw when you were hanging out outside when everybody else was inside. Oh, oh. shit. Oh, God. Why did I have to listen? Oh, God. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think you should make Walt make a sand check. I'm just saying. Yeah, so, I, I think that's probably your Oh, oh my God. <laughs> this is no, matter of fact, I was, I was thinking about this a couple of days ago, and Oh, two. Suck it. <laughs> Suck it. Um, during the narrative of this game, if something comes up that... So that means I was two away from 100. That gives, you, gives anybody the, the, you know, the pucker or the whatever, um, I, I would not be uh, objectionable. As a matter of fact, I, w I would prefer, you know, of, of uh, self-imposed sand rolls on things that aren't necessarily mechanical roles in the game uh, if something kind of gives you the willies or whatever uh, you know just kind of say hey you know what I, that's probably worth a little bit of a sand roll for my character or something um, I, I don't think that that would be an unreasonable thing uh, you know most of y'all I, I know Gustav you're I don't want to say you're new to role playing at this point you've been no he's 25, not 25 <laughs> years so. sessions now uh, but he's, he's new to good role playing. <laughs> so if something kind of hits you in the narrative that you're like, ooh, you know, it kind of gives you the shiver or whatever. Hey, man, that that's worth to your character a, a, a minor's hand roll. You know, it'll, it'll, it'll probably be just, you know, one point loss if you fail or something like that. But, um, I, but did, I don't I, think, did I see that scarecrow? I think it was only Walt that saw it, and Walt, you, you described it, I believe. To... That's because I was too freaked out. I had the heebies and the jeebies, so I decided to stay outside, which apparently was, once again, a more dangerous choice. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'll do the opposite of whatever my instincts are. <laughs> but I think I think the, the fact that the house burned down is curious. It's, 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 well, that's why I'm... I think we need to go back. I think this is. I think this I is a. This well, is a low hand. Right oh, oh shit! Aaron wants us to go back. So, <laughs> yeah. remember, do the opposite. We need to do the opposite of what my inclination is. Hey, never go there again. We're gonna go visit that nice peaceful convent up the valley. We're not going <laughs> That's right. Where this, so. Aaron's like, yeah, it's even better. <laughs> <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> Perfect. Uh, go ahead and give me the uh, medicine roll for the actual procedure. Here okay. comes the ninety-nine. Here it comes. Oh, we lost Last it. Last thing he said to us. Oh, yeah, I make it. Uh, okay, terrible. Cool. Don't forget to check that off. All right. I'm checking my list. Mark too. off persuade or psychology. Oh, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, your your psychology. Uh, These are not skills I get to use very often. Well, I, th I think that was more of a psychology than it was a persuade. And so well, his malpractice as... skill is very good. Okay. I'll mark off psychology. Yeah. All right, uh, so I'll fix him up, put him down on the bed. To, is he? Uh, is he? Is the deputy around or the sheriff? Uh, yeah, uh, both both of the sheriff and, uh, and the deputy are, are nearby. Yeah. So I'll say, well, uh, he's 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 out, and uh, fix that, patch it up. You uh, you want to leave him here, or you want to handcuff him or something? Oh, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put him in the in the cell if you if if you have no objections. Yep. So they kind of, you know, boost them over one, uh, 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 O'Brien boosts, uh, uh, boosts uh, Terry over his shoulder and kind of somewhat gently uh, hauls him out of the uh, office and, and presumably takes him over to uh, 
the sheriff's office and locks him up in the clinker. Okay. Well, I guess I imagine Walt will, will rush in looking all pale and and sickly, but that's his normal look. So, we also <laughs> so yeah, so Walton Gabriel, you are uh, alone in the doctor's office now. Well, that's it. That's interesting. He said he burned down the house and he'd do it again. But and you know, back and it was back. you know that demon he was describing? Yeah, I don't know what it gave me a about. turn because I told you there was a really creepy uh, air crow, a really, really deeply creepy scare fit crow in the field. I was a little scared at the time. I thought we agreed not to call me that anymore. <laughs> Uh, the um, the agri agrarian um, wording creature. The agrarian construct. The agrarian construct. Yeah, um, I think we need to go back because what he's describing sure looked a lot like. Uh, it gave me a, it gave me a turn. I mean, it sounded that, that that really creepy scarecrow that I saw. I described it to you. Found it a whole lot like what he was describing as the demon that he unloaded his Winchester into. And that's right on top of your property and near the town. So, so at the very least, there's a story. A drunk guy firing his gun at the scarecrow and the scarecrow being there when he got back doesn't sound like he Well, he's he's clearly deranged because he told me you heard I you know, I, I heard what he told you is what he told me. He thought for some reason I was gonna set things right with the with the abacus of evil in town and thinking I'm going to set things right. It's pretty, laughable. Six, it's pretty yeah. laughable. I mean, yeah, it might be a, the danger six, but um, anyway, um, we never it, went in the basement. And that's, you recall think, with the, that scarecrow thing, you, you had been scanning the... Um, I've been scanning the... I was freaked out, so I was scanning the night air with listen and scans really acutely. So, I mean, I was absolutely eyes peeled during that whole episode. Yeah, and, you know, for your, your first couple scans over the, the fields, you didn't see anything. And then, you know, the 10 minutes later when you went back and, you know, kind of did your march around the house or what, how, you know, your patrol you were doing. I was on the I was on horseback, as I recall. Yeah, yeah. just looping around suddenly, the house. Suddenly you saw it, something that wasn't there beforehand. Yeah, well, I already made my sand check for O2, but I'm going to take a, take a shot out of my uh, hip flask at this point and be like, uh, I need to steady myself. A, was a scarecrow in a field with tall grass or something? Maybe because you got up on your horse, you, you saw it where you hadn't seen it the first time. Yeah. Plus, Bill. That's a good story. I like that. That must have been what happened. You've got to put your mind <laughs> um, in. Okay, but yeah, I think we All need right. to get everybody back together and get on some daylight and go back out. I really do. So, what do you? What would you suggest we do about it? Well, I guess we could. We've got the bugle. Well, we have to. Well, we have to check out the rest of the house. Besides, but tomorrow morning, I got to talk to the townsfolk at church anyway to try to settle them down. By the way, since it's just us talking, remember the the mud people that we saw? So, hang on a second. So, charcoal. So, the message on my door was, "We feel a kinship to you, doctor." By the way, when we all get back together, I'm gonna. You know, we're gonna. We're brainstorm this out a little bit but then it says we feel a kinship to you doctor bring the killer to us and let our soul rest bring us holy peace or bring us down if you think you can is the killer is that the the drunk uh, he's, he, i don't i think he's pretty much a nobody he's not even a has-been so do we think it was a scare? Okay. So okay. So we'll get everybody together. Yeah. Let's let's uh, let's let's rally the troops here, and we'll have a conversation. I think. So I Walt, think you Gus... want to go find everybody and bring them back here. I got to clean up this uh, the table here. Yeah. By yeah, the that, way, is he that... is he going to be okay? I mean, I I did shoot him. I feel a little responsible. He just he just winged him. Yeah, you you, you, you winged him. You're probably I mean... shooting for his head. That's why you hit him in the shoulder. I mean, it's it's a shoulder wound. It's it's going to take him a while to recover, and hopefully, you know. Uh, no infections, blah blah blah. But from from Call of Cthulhu uh, rules point of view, um, you know, uh, medicine roll was applied with an hour of the wound. So yeah, he'll he'll probably recover fairly easily. Okay, a top notch medical professional. That's right. Uh, well, um, you were so you had so much alcohol on your breath, you probably sterilized him when you're breathing on him. Uh, well, yeah, all right, Doc. I'll uh, I'm gonna I'll I think Gustav. 
I don't know if he's going to be able to join us. He looked oh, actually, pretty out. He looked pretty out of it. Uh, Tillengast was at. Uh, Tillengast was going to the old bank. So why don't we just meet yes. over there? I'll, I'll clean this up, and if you get the guys, and we'll we'll go back. We'll go back to the bank. Okay, Gustav, uh, give me a gambling roll with advantage. Edward, give me a uh, a, a cipher roll with advantage. roll with advantage. That means I take the better of two rolls? Correct. Success. Success. Just a normal pass? Uh, just yeah. a regular success for me. Okay. All right, so, you know, gambling for a little while, not too long, you made 18 bucks. Which, again, considering the average income of a person in town per day is probably $3 or so. so oh, I got some people pissed at me. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you probably, I don't think anyone's going to call you out in the street for $18. No. Maybe for the mud men. Well, uh, yeah. Edward, we spread... you're, you're, you're plowing through your translations. Okay. Vance and Chris, um, were you going to be doing anything in particular with the evening, or? I figured we might be going to get a drink. Yeah, I figured drink something to eat, then bed. Yep, probably go to our normal bar. <clears throat> okay. Um, so you, you you both head on over to the, the gem, and uh, uh, you actually find a, a Gustav looking somewhat refreshed, uh, just starting to do a little bit of of uh, gambling, as it were. Um, I know better than sit at a table with him, so I'll <laughs> nod my hat to him and head over to the bar and drink at the bar. Fair enough. And kind uh, of survey the crowd, that type of thing. On occasion in, in the gym, um, there, there, are, there are boards um, placed near the door, much like a, a town notifications, that sort of thing. Um, one catches your eye, both Chris and, and Vance, because uh, once again, always an eye for maybe picking up a couple bucks here and there kind of thing. If I, 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 after it been a bounty hunter, I probably look for the occasional wanted and go out and do something like that at times uh you see a notification um uh, it's written in a, a female uh handwriting um or at least what you gather to be female handwriting has that sort of ele more elegant style than most most men uh, and um, it appears from a uh, Renee Wilson and a uh, Maria Rodriguez um, looking for uh, uh, Tommy and Blitz uh, missing for the last five days um please contact at the uh um uh effectively at the la laundromat what were the names again of the ladies uh renee wilson and maria rodriguez names that they wanted to find? Tommy and Blitz. Which I'm guessing Blitz is a dog. <laughs> or a horse. Can't think of anyone that named their 
Ch children blitz. Nah. Unless it's a nickname. I reckon this could be worth looking at in our spare time. Hey, if it's local. Uh, there, there are some other uh, uh, general notifications. Uh, you, you see, you know, you've been in town for quite a while now. Um, you see a lot more help wanted for ranch hand um, notifications than before. Now, that doesn't come too terribly surprising as, you know, several people recently died. <laughs> right in a in a posse, um, uh, but the amount of of proverbially speaking help wanted uh, is longer than uh, what would account for you know the the what six people that well five people uh, we'll go ran ranch hand style people that died in the posse. Here's some uh, miners might be needed. A little short of those. Well, the miners were mostly uh, um, out of towners, um, and you see a little bit more fancy uh, notification. Um, also, looking for uh, ranch hands. Uh, with the right disposition uh, please contact uh, the Montclair Ranch they mean by proper disposition i don't know i mean we could ask uh, at the bar maybe they'd have more yeah i mean this seems to be a little weird unusual for the amount of help wanted well you notice dan at the bar yeah and so you we're talk to and you're, uh hanging out up on the the upper rails uh as he often does Sipping from his coffee mug, the coffee mug, as you now know, is not uh, coffee. Rotates between coffee in the morning and and <laughs> uh, uh, a fairly nice whiskey in the evenings. Uh, but if it was brown liquids, it's always the same uh, uh, coffee coffee mug, though. Uh, check with the uh, the guy at the bar. You just said his name, and I already forgot it. And. and my buddy he's yeah. a good he's an, he's a, a friend of mine it's uh, really nice to meet you jinx for free so yeah Where's you the, see dan there right in my jar he's relatively busy it is a saturday night um there are a fair amount of and again you, you can kind of tell from uh disposition and smell and clothing uh a fair amount of ranch hands uh are in the saloon um, most ranches do not have like a, a whatever a logo or anything along those lines. Uh, so you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, so they're they're just general general ranch hands there. Um, and you know the 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 trade upstairs uh, seems to be going well as well as the gambling. Matter of fact, as you kind of look around on the gambling, the gambling. Uh, for what action you do see happening, it you see a lot more chips on the table than perhaps you've seen in the past. A little more money seems to be hmm. circulating. Interesting. Maybe they're have to paying say, better. If there's a lot of help wanted and only limited source, I'd imagine wages have gone up. Might explain that. More money, the quicker you piss it away. Towns like this, absolutely. Hmm. Well, I'm not one for ranch handing, but how about cow punching? 
should be interesting to find out exactly. I gotta admit that right disposition bit. <laughs> uh, all right, well, I'll look around at some of the other ranch hands and, you know, uh, try to, you know, generally, mm, how good is my charm? Hold on. Because it's a different character. Give me a scan roll as well. Well, I do have read lips, so I could li read into conversations. Uh, scan. Uh, oh, just short of a of a um, hard success, but a success right. nonetheless. Um, I will spend five points and make it a hard. Okay. Um, Got the in doing model. so, you notice. <laughs> two fellows who again, they're in the appropriate clothing for for being ranch hands. Uh, a bit of mud on their shoes. A little cleaner than perhaps most of the rest of them. Hats are a little bit straighter. Uh, clothing a little less, less dusty. Um, and where most of the rest of the people here are are fairly animated. Woohoo! It's you know Saturday, letting off steam. Um, these two people. Give me an idea roll. Ah, zero six. Wow. Okay, you get the distinct impression that they're doing almost exactly what you're doing right now. Hmm. <laughs> they are getting. A sense of the room. I will try to make sure that I am not conspicuous to them, uh, because people like that could usually be um, source of trouble. Yeah, <laughs> a source of trouble. Yeah. Uh, I will, in passing, you know, take a drink, you know look back at the bar and take a drink and mention it to Barnett going, hey, table such and such, you know, table six. Uh, two fellers that look like ranch hands, but a little bit cleaner. They seem to be scanning the whole bar. I'll take a sly look at them as out of the corner of my eye, not trying to be direct to see if I can't pick up anything on them. I don't know if a streetwise or anything like that might help. Let's see. Yeah, give me give give me a roll of something you think is appropriate out of your out of your pile of skills here. Yeah, I think streetwise that could give intent. Is that All right. I think that makes sense. Yeah. A four. Wow. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's on fire tonight. Um, Means the nineties are coming. <laughs> yeah, uh, these two guys, um, matter of fact, you know, it, it, it barely requires any reference from Vance for you to kind of look around and go, oh, geez, yeah. Uh, and these guys are definitely in a, a, a much less overt way than you guys are. Um, I don't want to say staring down the rest of the, the saloon, but they are assessing people uh, kind of with their eyes. And as you glance again, they're both sipping from shot glasses. They're not, they're not shooting their drinks. But you notice as one pulls down the shot glass, a little bit of blood goes back into the, into the shot glass from his mouth. That's odd. I'll mention that as an aside to Vance. Maybe he's got a bad tooth. Hmm. Well, he doesn't cough. <laughs> Could be tuberculosis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing you, you kind of notice is they're being very cool. They're showing almost no emotionality whatsoever. 
one of them is going to make eye contact with one of you guys, and it's, it's going to be go time. I don't think they keep on rolling sixes and fours. Yep. But here comes the 96. It's going to be like that. <laughs> it's going to be like that. I'm looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at me? It's like, what? Oh, uh, you must be looking oh, at me. No, I'm not looking at you. <laughs> uh, All right. Well, uh, you know, generally keep a, an eye on them. Um, since they're sitting down, probably can't see what kind of iron they're packing, right? Um, Not without making myself conspicuous. and. Yeah, I mean, you, you would have to... If you want to keep very inconspicuous, you'd have to make mm -hmm. up a real good narrative reason why you'd be like walking past them or something along those lines. Yeah. Looking for your contact lens. Think it rolls under the table. I mean, may, maybe if you uh, were heading upstairs to to visit a lady or or maybe have a brief talk with Swearinger or something, that would bring you pretty close to their table. Um. Maybe with a good roll, observation roll of some sort while you were doing that. Yeah, maybe going up to talk to Swearinger to see if there's uh, anything new that he needs to have a look at or wants to have us take a look at. So, honey, you know that guy that the Israeli gun I spent $3,400 on? Mm -hmm. um, One I could go ahead and shape his mind, just try that. You do that, I'll stay here and All keep right. an eye on him. All right. For a while. I'll walk to the base of the stairs and oh, get permission. I promise you, I'll always be able to get off Slayer, the uh, Serenger. Okay, uh, Carl, g uh, give me a scan roll. This, even this music sounds ominous. He was a little off-putting. Made it. Not, not hard, not critical. Okay, fair enough. Um, Vance, you uh, walk you know, uh, by uh, the table. Uh, give me a scan roll as well. Apparently, he's excited to see you. Uh, hold on. That's a oh, that is a hard success. What's that? Does your machine copy? Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, looking at their, you know, it's sort of a sweeping look that you do right mm -hmm. um and the their firearms appear to be pretty pretty uh, you know standard if you will but you notice underneath um the the where their vests come together each each of them there there's a a bulge as though there is a sack uh, uh, around their 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 necks. There's like a sack, kind of like right right here, uh, with both of them. Like a sack sack, like we took off that guy that was the sack shooter, or was the recipient of the sack shooter. Well, it's 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 covered underneath some clothes, but it's about the right size. We got the right man. Oh. Rock beans. <laughs> like a medicine? Isn't that like a medicine bag or something? All right, I'm gonna, you know, yeah. just, it's a six oh, demon make, bag. Make note of that and head on up to the over to where Swearinger is. Oh, yeah, you know, it's, you know, almost like a dice bag kind of thing. You know? Yeah. Moment, they just knocked a bunch of dice into a trash can. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, I dropped a whole dice bag into that. I'm guessing it was an open bag. <laughs> he dropped a whole lot of dice. Drop a whole dice bag and four separate dice. <laughs> okay, so you head up to uh, uh, the the top uh, balcony where, in effect, if you hang a right, you'd head to Swearinger's office. To the left would be the uh, um, 
uh, the cat house portion. Yeah, but, I would head over to where if Swearinger is still up there, I'll you know go over and lean and you know nod my hat to him. Yeah, he sees you as you as you come up to the top of the stairs and kind of does his his sort of classic kind of raises his mug to you and kind of raises an eyebrow and kicks back and sips a little more. Um, a general indication that, you know, if you want to talk, that's fine. If you want to All right. not talk, that's fine with him as well. I will uh, swing on over. Okay. And tell him, well, it looks a little bit busier, busier tonight. It's good it's night. I am seeing the money flowing on the tables a lot more. I'll tell you, there's nothing better than a saloon that's busy. <laughs> hey, you know, I was looking downstairs and I saw on the board that uh, uh, the Montclair Ranch was looking for ranch hands with the right disposition. Well, any inkling what that means? I was looking at that. Matter of fact, I was bitching at Johnny about even letting that sign, little notation be up on the boards. It does seem kind of weird, doesn't it? Yeah, right disposition. I mean... Well... Maybe there's a, an unspoken word in the ranch handbook that the rest of us don't know. <laughs> well, the Montclair Ranch is very large. And, uh, by all accounts, growing. He's been, uh... Taking over smaller ranches? Yeah, by one means or another, if you know what I mean. Mm. Matter of fact, I had a recent discussion with Mr. Green on that. Owner of a smaller ranch, somewhat sandwiched, if you will, between the growing Montclair Ranch and the uh, T-Bar Ranch to the south. Still a good chunk of property, but uh, he's in uh, a little Dutch debt now at this point. Told him I could help him out. He didn't particularly like my uh, my terms, though. Dutch debt meaning he owes. He's making money, but he owes money. Mm. And now he's kind of in that terrible spiral. So he's lost some ran ranch ranch hands, and well, you know, you start losing ranch hands, you start having to offer him more money if the reason why you're losing your ranch hands is either well other people are paying better or well, let's just say if your working conditions have went a little south mm -hmm. so if you have to pay more but you're pulling in less money money's got to come from something else it's either kind of come from your property or from your cattle and since Montclair has recently wrapped up the contract with Fort Buell well, I'm pretty sure that's where Green was selling most of his cattle. But you're not in the cattle business. No. Nope. How long you think before Montclair starts poking his head into town? We've business. been through a couple times. Well, no town business. I don't think it'll be too much longer before he starts demanding a proverbial seat on the table. Hmm. That's worrisome. Should be to everybody. That is a bit worrisome. Strange man. Dabbling with some things I don't think he should be dabbling with. Yeah, I'm worried that the, the right disposition is more thug-like than anything else. That just brings in a a, dipe, a a bad type into town as well. He seems to like bad types. Which I thought we'd get on long famous. But he seems to have a... Hmm. Well, a taste of forbidden fruit. Hmm. Not talking drugs. I no, no, no. Sure. No, no. <laughs> Uh, I think I understand where you're you're coming from. Well, I'm sure you've seen his fancy-ass carriage come through on occasion. Uh, actually, yeah, I did. 
<clears throat> I saw it, uh, saw it earlier today. But if you recall, when you saw the carriage, you were convinced that the driver was the owner of the T-Bar Ranch. Oh. I'll mention that. Hmm. I'll describe the 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 uh, the carriage. Right. To, um, to make sure it's the same one. He kind of rolls his eyes back a little bit, uh, and uh, kind of goes, "Well, just... you're definitely describing." Uh, Montclair's uh, ride, as it will. Uh, not to say that uh, uh, nobody else could have a similar carriage. There's only so many types of black painted carriages around, right? Yeah. But, I don't know, having said that, uh, the Watts. Well, as far as I can recall, by the way, the Watts are the owner of the T-Bar Ranch. Yeah. Um, can't say I've ever seen them drive around in a fancy carriage. Of course, not just the driver who's a uh, of concern if you saw that ranch or if you saw that carriage. And he kind of smiles himself, kind of looking at you with that sort of. Right, right. Uh huh. Nice, nice. <laughs> uh, uh, yep, yep. Now the uh. weird thing is, from your point of view, you can't, you don't seem to remember a passenger in the carriage, so you're not sure who he's nudge nudge wink, winking about. Hmm. Oh, I was focused on the driver, not the, not the rest of the carriage. Well, I guess that's true. And whoever the passenger w- would have been opposite from your point of view. Of the yeah. Um, this might be where you want, want to do a little bit of a persuade or something to see if you can't guide <laughs> the conversation so he might casually say who he thinks at least was in the passenger side. Okay. I'm going to spend the... Ouch. Ah, uh, 27 points <laughs> to get a success. Holy crap. Okay. 94 minus 27. Um, it came up a little short. Seven. He uh, says, well, I'll tell you. Uh, Colonel McDaniel's uh, wife is uh, a very attractive woman, don't you think? Oh. Had I seen her? Uh, you don't even know who the hell he's talking about. Don't think I've had the pleasure of seeing her. Huh. Well, now have you sparked my interest? <laughs> you had my curiosity, now you have my attention. She definitely uh, sparks most men's imagination. Hmm. I'll be honest. Uh, well, I guess you haven't been here long enough to recall. She, uh, Eleven yeah, wants, years. <laughs> yeah. How, how long? Eleven years. Oh, uh, give me a, a area knowledge roll. Okay. Uh, I'm in my cups. <laughs> um, let's see. Or it would be a very fuzzy recollection. Yeah. Um. The way he describes her, um, and 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 Surinder even says she even used to work for me. Of course, oh. that is before the colonel got rather smitten with her. Wow. I guess she hasn't uh, straightened up her ways too much yet. Well. It's hard to, to give up a lifestyle, I guess, at points. 
Well, I still have a little in with that. She still has a taste for the old blood. Mm. Well, you guys swear John is most chatty night of the, yeah, he's, of the year. He's, 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 he's happy because he's making money right he's now. He's making money. Yep. That's a good thing. Pump him. Well, I must admit, it's it's definitely interesting to see more people in here gambling. I'm just not much of a gambler myself. You know, I'll play cards with my with my fellers because we're not trying to you know skin flint each other. Sure. But, uh, of course, I've been thinking about putting in a roulette table. Oh. Perhaps you'd be interested in something along those lines. I don't know. That Quick could be back of the thing. That could be interesting. It was something that caught my attention in the crowd down there. Um, there are two gentlemen sitting at table, you know, five. Right. Uh, I've been noticing they've been just not really enjoying themselves, but have just been watching the whole place. He kind of leans over onto the... Uh, I don't know if they're if it's a if it's a yeah. casing or just a general carousal of the whole establishment. He leans over onto the the railing, r- yeah, railing uh, baluster of, of of the balcony and kind of briefly looks down, really kind of almost over his cup of coffee. Or well, you can tell at this point it's it actually smells a little bit like a, a watered down whiskey, uh, and. Uh, he uh, puts a finger to his left side of his nose and looks down to, to Johnny <laughs> and flicks a couple fingers real fast and puts his nose back up like that and then takes another sip. You know, as Johnny uh, head over to Dan and Dan uh, Dan's demeanor changes ever so slightly, kind of a uh, Starts cleaning up a, a cup a little bit or a little a shot glass a bit quicker while he's kind of serving <laughs> stuff, um, and uh, Johnny goes running off to or not running but uh, Johnny's a bit of a bumbling idiot anyway. Uh, you almost see him kind of bumble back to the the, the back rooms that you or where uh, at the gem uh, on the main floor. Uh, and he goes, well, or Swearinger looks at you, consider us even even on uh, information exchange for the evening then. All right. They do seem a little cold. Yes. Christopher, uh, give me uh, one more. Uh, no, wait, you did really good on that previous scan, didn't you? Yeah. I just made it. Oh, you just made it. Okay, give me another roll then. Oh, or oh. this one I did really good with heart success. <laughs> heart success. Okay. Um, their demeanor in itself hasn't particularly changed. The one thing you do notice outside of the one drinker who seems to be slowly bleeding into his shot, uh, shot glass, is they're synchronously breathing. They seem to be inhaling at the same time and exhaling at the same time. Well, that's odd. Twins, Basil. Twins. Uh, at this point, Walt, uh, you come into uh, the saloon. Yeah. Um, Gustav, you're up about eighteen dollars, as we said before. Right. As as usual, I will, being an observant fellow, I will immediately scan the room to see if I can see my compatriots and anything anything going on. I mean. Give me a scan roll real quick. Well, obviously, uh, with the 97, I was distracted still. So thinking, about the, <laughs> thinking about the, uh, that, uh, that really creepy scarecrow. So, uh, sure. you know, I'm, uh, I'm like, I don't see him. Uh, you, you, you see Gustav at, at the, the, uh, at one of the tables. He's, uh, they're, they're <laughs> taking a, a, a little bit of a break, uh, between, uh, um, rounds of whatever seven guard draw or something like that. You see a moment where you could go to Gustav. I will go. I will go to him. 
All right. Fine for you. Um, Pretty sure if you see uh, Walt come up to you. Hey, Walt. What's going on? Hey, looks like, uh, how are you making out at the tables? Uh, pretty good. I'm up a little bit so far. Uh, might take a, might take a bit of a break now. What are you guys up to? Uh, Doc Trout wanted to get us all together, um, kind of talk things through before tomorrow. Uh, you do know I was involved in a shooting today, right? Oh, is that you? I thought I heard gunfire. Yeah, the oh. sissy gun. That was mine. But uh, I'm still here. Uh, I shot a man, so I sent a little work to Doctor Trout. Have you seen a? Uh, have you seen a um, Vance or uh, Christopher? Because I uh, did not with a '97. Um, <laughs> Gustav, uh, retroactively, give me a scan roll. Favorite, the retroact. Well, this would be. Did you notice them come in when they came in? Sure. Because I sure didn't. The answer is mm, yeah. Okay. We don't expect a news report. You're burn a you did. Okay, so you say well. Might have been here. Uh, I I think I, I saw Chris and Vance come in here about you know 15, 20 minutes ago. I'll I'll take another look, and if I don't see them, I'll look for Dan because he's a friend of mine. Sure. Uh, he's usually uh, pretty easy to spot. Look, looking around, you see see Kristoff strangely uh, sitting alone at uh, uh, another table. Um, Christoph, you, you, you've noticed uh, Walt enter the... Are you saying Christoph or Gustav? You're throwing me. Are you talking Christopher or... Christopher, sorry. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I was Christoph. like, you... you oh, you're new compl- person. Christoph, that amalgam, <laughs> that, that future amalgamation of Christoph and Christoph. <laughs> we know how... We know That's what happens if you, if you touch the pillars at the same time. <laughs> yes. uh, <laughs> better than crystal okay uh i'll look at i'll look at christopher and uh i'll beckon him over i'm um i don't know maybe you know maybe i'm getting a i don't know maybe i'll see if there's a vibe going on in the room since i blew it the first time because he's sitting by himself which seems really odd i mean i have a pretty good psychology is uh, uh you, you can roll again with disadvantage all right jesus really a 98 <laughs> I actually did worse. I was just like, "That's not a nine, is it?" Uh, the only thing you particularly notice is that that uh, there's, there's something on my shoe. <laughs> that, that the <laughs> the um, did I fart? Evening <laughs> does seem to be a little more uh, raucous, a uh, little little more sound of uh, uh, chips clinging on the tables and and such like that. Uh, outside of that. You're not really picking up on much of a vibe, uh, but you get over. Literally, to, no. <laughs> but you get up over to uh, uh, Christopher. All right, so I'll probably be like, "Hey, Christopher, how's it going?" Completely oblivious to any tension in the room. Like, why are you here alone? <laughs> yeah, why are you sitting here alone? Yeah, what? You know, I just saw Gustav's gambling. What's uh, Doc Trout wants to get us all back together at his office? Hey, you might have heard. You might have heard that there was a shooting today. I was involved in that. Just, you might want to make your memory roll because you're supposed to meet at the bank, not the office. Yeah, well, I'm afraid to make any rolls at this point. Especially, don't give me any sand checks for the love of God, Aaron. Don't give me any sand checks. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna go bad. It's gonna go sideways fast. Uh, anyway, yeah. Have you seen Christopher? Uh, Doc Trout I mean, wanted to get us all, all together. He well, said Christopher well, has seen Christopher. Sorry, right, I'm in Christoph. No, I mean, what I really mean is, have you seen, uh, have you seen Vance? Yeah, Vance went up to talk to Swearage and uh, what does the doc want to meet? Does he want to meet right now or does he want to meet in the morning? Uh, tonight, soon. We've got, got some stuff we want to talk about for the big church meeting tomorrow. All right. I'll look up at Vance and beckon him down. I'll be like, okay, uh, Vance, give me a, a, a scan with advantage. You know, my role was with a disadvantage. I didn't even get past the first roll. Because uh, <laughs> you failed on the first time. I yeah, failed it so success. badly. Okay, you, you notice uh, 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 Christopher talking with Walt and Chris kind of giving you a, a quick kind of uh, sort of eyebrow. <laughs> well, if you excuse me, Mr. Swearinger. Have a good evening. You too. Hope everything is uh, all right. I think for the time being, we're going to have things 
covered. All right. I was thinking uh, I'm going to go down and rejoin my friends and may stick around for a little bit unless there's something coming on with them. Well, no hogging the tables playing non-gambling games unless there's a free table. Well, no, I'll be I'll be standing by the bar. Have a good evening. You too. He yeah, gets up and you can see I he goes into the office. In the office, uh, there is a lady. Um, you also notice that through the office, uh, there's, uh, you know, he has a, another door leading to a balcony leading out yeah. you know, to the outside. And he seems to be heading over, over to there just to kind of uh, watch the thoroughfare, evidently. Yeah, that lady in this place. Who's out here? <laughs> well, I guess everybody needs to take a break. Oh yeah. I'll give uh I'll give him the uh, quick rundown. Um well yeah, there was a shooting today that I was involved in, involving a town drunk, the one who was kicked out of here, Mr. Travers. He said some really uh, interesting things that we probably need to talk about before our meeting with the church tomorrow to kind of settle things down in town. Uh basically we think there's something um something that might warn our immediate attention just outside of town that we need to look into. Well, I say re-look into. By the way, at this point, I'm going to stop and kind of look around, make sure no one's trying to listen in because I'm about to drop some. Well, because you're you know, observant. I'm just because I'm just because I can't <laughs> just because I got my sunglasses on at night because it looks cool. <laughs> uh, Anyway, While he's talking. I'll situate myself so that I can look over his shoulder at the table, if that's possible. Okay, uh, Walt, did you get that scan roll? Oh, thank God! Oh six. I saw the oh. So yes, I finally. Okay, you notice two uh, less animated than the rest of the people. Uh, fellas, um, and they seem to now be looking at your table. Okay, I'm going to, um, table or bar? I'm going to look right at him, kind of nod, and I'll say, uh, shall we? Let's get, let's get Gustav too. I'll see how my comrades react. I, you saw me look at him, kind of nod, tip my hat, and say, look, uh, can we uh, head out? Tell me about those guys a little later. Yeah, they, they don't seem to react to your your nod. Okay. Uh, I will also go out of my way to, if I can see Dan, and just shake his hand and say, just say a quick hello before we head out. Because he's my pal, and I haven't talked to him in a while. Sure. He, he, he says, well, good to see you. Yeah. Great to see you, Dan. Busy night. Lots of money flowing. Yeah. Some... He kind of... He... That's an interesting looking guy over there. Kind of <laughs> gave me the fish eye. Stop. I'm, I'm, I'm being discreet. I didn't point out. I'm, <laughs> I'm worldly. I just, I'll just kind of, you know, I'll just kind of be surreptitious and say uh, there's some interesting looking guys over there kind of checking us out. Uh, I think they've been checking everybody out tonight. We were in last night, too. Strange. I think there's a story here, or the kind of story I shouldn't stick my nose into at this point. Well, I heard you were in a little shootout. I get the feeling that these fellas, you'd be into a bigger shootout. Just well, a that, few. That's Scrub not. Back. That's not a. That's not exactly my skill, my uh, strength. So uh, I'm just quite happy that I ended up doing the shooting and not getting shot tonight. There's that town uh, that that drunk Traverse that you tossed out of here a while ago. Just went all crazy on me. Huh. Well, you got him, though? I got him. He just winged him. I mean, he, well, he, he, I don't exactly carry a big piece, but uh, he pulled, I, I he pulled him. from the, the, the top shelf on a bottle of uh, whiskey that has an actual label on it. Oh. Yeah, I just shot someone bottle. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And uh, so my friend shot somebody, and he's, he looks a little shaky. Pours, pours <laughs> you a, a generous shot and say, this one's on me. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. I'm kind of tip. I'll drink it. I say, well, I hate to be rude, but I had to pick up my colleagues. We got to go see Doc Trout. 
but uh, I'll be looking in on you later. Spend a little more time. We'll have a good evening. Sounds good. All right. Well, I will. I will. We'll collect up everybody and hopefully well, including Gustav. Yeah. Well, why don't you get Gustav? Vance yeah. and I, I, I suggest to Vance that we walk out. Yep. Trying to keep us side eye on our two interesting gentlemen to see how they react as we leave. Yeah, okay. Like, as like, as are they going to kill Walt as soon as he walks outside? <laughs> as you all are are, are leaving, uh, you absolutely notice that they are right now tracking you, you four. Uh, uh, at some point in time, they they picked up that you picked up on them. <laughs> yeah, Walt yeah. can't give it away. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. The rules uh, give it. The rules take it. The rules do, especially <laughs> when, when you take a 97. Uh, hey, Gustav, I'll kind of pat him. I'll say, uh, can we uh, head out? Yeah, let's do that. All right. And, and now they're like, oh, now he's involved too. <laughs> Thanks, <Walt. laughs> Thanks, Walt. Oh, let me just put this target on. Right, <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we're gonna, you know, we're just gonna not make a fuss. We're just gonna head straight out, not like in a yeah. rush, but we're gonna purposefully move outside. And actually, okay. I'm probably gonna cross the street in the shadows and wait on my our colleagues to follow us out. Uh, as you as you walk out, um, all four of y'all give me a. Uh, I know what it is. It's just not coming out of my mouth yet. Hold on. Dr. Trapp's like, why are they really taking a long time? Let's hope everything's okay. <laughs> it's not, it's not wise. Oh, I hate saying it because it tips off what it is. Hold on here. Sand check? <laughs> Dexterity? Yeah. Did we just talk about that? <laughs> All right. I'll individually roll. I'll, I'll, I'm going to do your rolls for you. Sorry. Okay. Uh oh. You Be gentle with nothing. me, Aaron. <laughs> you don't notice anything. And let me know how much luck to spend. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean impregnated? What? What? <laughs> Aaron decided to make. Let's make sure cold water isn't a safe haven anymore. I guess that makes sense. Give me one second. Where, where is he at? Somebody just got a message. Oh. Um. Do you proceed to the bank? Uh. I think you meant to send that to someone else, Vance. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Uh... <clears throat> so as the others start moving uh. away, I just kind of stop in my tracks and keep looking down. Okay. Um, unfortunately, no. Nobody else particularly notices. All right. I'm going to head down towards those horses. Okay. Uh, you approach You approach them. This point, everybody else probably guessed it, but... Um, <laughs> um, give me a natural world rule. 
Ugh. Small chance in hell. Oh my god, I rolled an 18. I'm going to spend the 8 points. <laughs> okay, you you kind of know what to look for, proverbially speaking. Um, there are some alterations, not near as heavily as your previous friend. Oh, fuck. Um, but they are not one... They are not normal horse flesh. All right, I'm going to have to... And uh, they emit a slight aura of coldness. Yeah. I'm going to step step back down a ways and kind of just do a, a little... to uh, get Barnett's attention. Okay. Well, everybody hears it, but sure, okay. Barnett, here's, here's the whistle too. Stop, turn around. I'll around. kind of turn my head, kind of nodding towards the the horses. Okay. Um, uh, Christopher, Gustav, and Walt, uh, give me uh, the scan roll. Sure. Uh, yeah. That's good. Oh, yeah. Gustav and Christopher, you can do it that with advantage because you were really close to one. Uh, I made it. Normal check. A critical success. <laughs> Yeah, I got 19 out of 59. I don't think oh. you beat that, but let's try. I, I, I beat mine by about 20, but not just a normal success. Not in the, in the no, just normal success variety. variety. 52 out of 69. Okay, so you all definitely see two extraordinarily, you would almost say identical, but you know you're not horse experts. Um. Uh, horses, uh, they are basically, you know, pitch black thoroughbred looking. Um, uh, Vance seems pretty concerned about the two horses as you, do you all approach them? Mm -hmm. Oh, get up. Vance get up and say where Vance is. I'm not going to go up and go, nice horsey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, a, a bit of a healthy, uh, what, what? Ten, 10 feet away? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just enough where I can confirm my suspicion. That's sure. where I'm going to follow them, but hang back. I mean, let, let them stay, stay well in front of me, but head, head over in that general direction so I can get a better look. But I am absolutely hanging back. Okay. Uh, natural world roll for Christopher. Uh, Gustav, what do you do? Are you, are you hanging with Walt or are you approaching as Christopher and Vance has? Um, I think I'm standing there with Walt. Okay. I, I don't. I don't know what they're up to. I don't know what their concern is. I'm going to spend the 19 Wait. points to make that a success. Okay. Um, yeah. Looking at the horses uh, again, you see some muscle curvatures that is not at all uh, typical to a normal horse. Again, not as big and bulky as that first crazy one that you had to kind of almost scoot by up at the the old uh, Craven Mine. Uh, looking down, you also notice that they are not shod. Well, the other one wasn't shod either, so that plays. Well, fuck, Vance. Looks like you know what's him. really bad? He looks like we found his brothers. Yeah, and I kind of notice bulges here. Yeah. Of a sack-like proportion, I would say. Uh-huh. Don't be checking out that horse's bulgy sack. <laughs> So, I'm a little worried about what those gentlemen are. And they got our, we've got their attention now, too. Because, hell, things happened inside of that place last time, and now those two are sitting in there. I thought that was just a one-off thing. Apparently not. Ah, um... Advance as you're kind of looking and whatever. Uh, these horses do have uh, riding gear on them. Mm -hmm. uh, you notice a very fancy, uh, so you know, a, a lot of uh, uh, saddles and stuff will have like a lot of scroll work and stuff in the yeah. leather, right? Uh, both have very nice scroll work done. 
Again, a little scuffed up and all. It's it's not like uh, um, well, it's not pristine, but it's still right. really nice. Yeah, you know, but money has been spent on these, right? And you notice on one of them, uh, inlaid is a very nice sort of cursive capital M with a little bit of gold leafing in the Oh boy. Oh boy. All right. Um, let's go see the dock. <laughs> and we'll let everybody know what we got here. Okay, I'm going to propose a little little ten minute timeout. All right. Well, maybe not ten, right. but just a a bio break. So yeah. Um, all right. So you saw some horses. We will right. head to Doctor Trout's. All right. Keeping an eye out to see if someone just starts following us. arrive at Dr. Trout's, you realize he's not there. Well, I'm assuming Walt's going to tell us where we need to go. Yeah. Now, I thought we were meeting at Dr. Trout's. You were told that since Edward was already over or heading over to the bank, that we were all going to meet over at the bank. Uh, well, that would be my second guess, obviously. Perhaps caught up in the a little bit of the the peculiarities. Uh, you know, thankfully uh, the uh, doctor's office is only what two doors down from the gym, something like yeah. that. Um, it's it's closed with a little, you know. The doctor is out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, you surmise, perhaps perhaps at the old bank. Yeah, I was like, oh, sorry, I guess maybe we want to meet at the bank. Ah. Head to the bank. All right. To the bank. And uh, nothing too, you know, you get to the bank uh, and you didn't notice any um, anybody following or anything. Uh, you get to the front door and go, oh, shit, that's right. Front door's uh, barricaded. Yeah, because it was broke, broken. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll go around back. Yeah, the side door. The only people that have keys are me and Tillingast, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. All right, so the door's locked when you get there. So we'll knock on the door. No, nope. do the same thing I did last time. Shoot the door. <laughs> Jimmy it. <laughs> you do who, has, who hasn't picked the lock yet i could try that let me get in on that action uh you do get to the back door and it is indeed locked uh you do see uh, uh a couple uh, uh, of uh lantern uh hurricane lanterns lit um uh, edward i assume you you were translating in, in the basement probably yes Yes, this dark, creepy basement. Yes. Absolutely, <laughs> with the big giant it. statue with a towel over it, with a yep. draped over it. Uh, give me a second cipher roll with advantage. <laughs> Zero two. Wow. Okay. Um, Damn. You are you are halfway through now. Uh, you, you're, you're you're making very good pace. It's Lewis Cipher. <laughs> Such a mouthful in Manhattan. Uh, do you actually pick the lock, or you just simply knock knock on the door? No, we'll just simply knock. I didn't pick it last time. I I kind of leaned and forced it in. Uh, doctor, you you hear a knock, knock, knock on the back door. Come up and answer the door. Okay. Uh, there is a small window. Uh, no, there's probably not actually a several, window. Several unsavory people outside yeah. of you. Uh, Luckily, you know. Open the back door and everyone's cowed in black. <laughs> That's pointed at him. <laughs> hey, gents. Come on in. All right. 
You're <laughs> now in the bank. Woohoo. Let's well, we got a problem. Yeah. Let's lock, let's lock, let's uh, bolt the door. If... Okay. We got a problem. What's the problem? When I say we, it's we're all in it. Uh, remember the sack and medicine bag thing? Yeah. And the bad He's man on the horse. He's got two friends in town. The ritual murderer and delimerizer. Yep. And guess who pointed pointed uh, <laughs> pointed them in our direction? Let's, say, let's fix the problem, not the not, let's fix the problem, not the blame. All right, come on. <laughs> Tenderfoot here stood out like a sore thumb, and uh, from what I understand from uh, from uh, uh, these these guys were really. They definitely had what seemed to be Madison bags around their neck. It also and, seemed uh, to be cold, uh, yeah, and synchronous. And their riding horse is similar to the gentleman we horses. dealt up with. Ed. What do you mean, breathing synchronous? They were breathing in and out at the same time. That's not normal. That is not normal, Doctor Trout. Have you ever encountered anything like that? Yes, uh, the synchronized breathers of Latvia are known for <laughs> Latvia. We're okay. <laughs> we spend enough time to get this breathing cycle synced up. And the last thing I noticed when one of them was drinking, a bit of blood was coming out of his mouth back into his shot glass. Ew, that's that's unsanitary. So uh, I point him out to Sl Sl uh, Swearinger. And uh, he's got his boys watching them. But uh, I have a feeling that if they try anything, Slander's going to have a lot of dead boys. <laughs> now, the thing that struck me as uh, odd is I was having a discussion with Slanger, and he was talking about, um, we were talking about different things. And one of the things that we noticed at the on the board in the saloon was the Montclairs were looking for ranch hands with the right disposition. I didn't understand what that meant, and I kind of breezed it past Swearinger, and he wasn't really sure about it either. It struck him as peculiar as well. But uh, now that we've seen those two boys, and one of them has a flared M with gold leaf in the saddle. I don't know if that's part of the Montclair insignia. I think we would have to maybe see one of their signs or check some of their other horses. Yeah, but not in Boston Gold. That sounds like somebody's valuable horse. Yes. Well, <laughs> I, I wouldn't mean, like, call like, these horses like Montclair valuable. Montclair Ranch doesn't gold emboss their saddles, I don't think. Well, but a Montclair, Mon but a Montclair family member would. Right, and the Montclairs do have that fancy uh, uh, carriage. Don't I remember something about one of the Montclairs been going missing or or getting killed? I'm just I'm just misremembering that. I don't have my notes. Once I find that notebook, I'll know. <laughs> He's the Tuesday pad. But that does sound familiar. Uh, hold on. Yeah, that I've definitely heard. I've heard the name. I just don't know the context, but I've definitely heard it. Well, part of the reason we were originally talking about um, that this seems like a, a little more potentially dangerous to our imminent imminent personages is uh, is the the man I shot today, uh, the town drunk Travers, um, was under the impression that I was going. We I. We are going to uh, take out the demon when we investigated that house by uh, the Doc's ranch house that had that weird scarecrow I described. Um, when Doc was doing surgery on him, he described that weird scarecrow is um, basically being um, what he described is what he shot and attacked and didn't really seem to mind getting shot multiple times was the scarecrow in the uh, 
outside that I that you know wasn't there then it was there so I was thinking we should go back to that ranch house and check it out thoroughly because they're you know this guy was crazy enough to uh say he burned the house down he's going to do it again and he shot the demon and the demon didn't care and then we had that message on the doctor's house about settling with it so this might have nothing to do whatsoever with the uh, the sacks the sack riders and their and their hell horses but that's why that's why when the doc and i spoke that's why i was going to get you to bring you back to talk about that ah. and that's after i talked to the townsfolk tomorrow about the mud the mud people that you know that we dealt with so we still got to do that too so so he said that the scarecrow was the demon he, the, the what he described was the scarecrow thing was what he described as a demon but the note on the door said, "Put, put, put the killer at rest, and give me holy peace, or something like that." So, I sort of wonder: is the scarecrow? Is the killer? The is the killer that guy? Um, here, I'll take the head. The drunk guy. Is the killer some demon? Well, you, um, or is the demon? I, so I don't know who wrote on the door. It could have been the scarecrow. It could have been somebody else. It could have been the the, the avenging spirit of the guy that got killed. I, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, they might be completely unrelated. You know, before I left, it seemed like this is something pressing, given what just you know the I think you know the betting around the table just escalated quite a bit in terms of uh, the situation. The the demon and the the house that burned down and those who was actually in that house again. I was there. It was Brandon. Custom. I was there. Yeah, and oh, who, we all we admitted it was all strange, right, Edward? You, mm -hmm. And we were, we never strange. went back. So um, yeah, it was like a, a copy of the. It was a, a that might be something we could do in the bright light of day tomorrow after we talk to the town. Um, Sounds good. And then the other thing we could do is we could also, now that Swearingen is alerted to it and it's men are, and I'm friends with Dan, um, you know, informally. They could kind of keep an eye on him too. Hell, we could even let you, you know, I think we're pretty tight with the sheriff now, even though one of his posses got wiped out. Um, you know, we could maybe alert him too. Wasn't doing so, well. you know, more people who are an authority and have the ability to fight, being aware that there's some bad hombres in town might be a good idea. What do you think? Well, I think we should let the sheriff know. Yeah. Um, I'd also but, like to go back and explain to Swearinger what he's actually about to deal with. Yeah, but do we want... It's night, they're in town. This might all be stuff that we should do in the morning as well, opposed so, to so in, the middle said, of the, in the middle of the night right now so where things could go were, south. So from what you were describing, I would say that the, the odd dudes, my, my, my first thought when you started describing them was that the way they were acting was they're casing the joint to rob it because it's so busy. Um, I think I think it's as, as likely as not that they're here looking for us. <laughs> Dang. And it is they're there to cause trouble for Swearingen. Yeah, I don't think they're here to cause trouble for I mean, Swearingen. Maybe the but... Swearingen has something they want. I, I don't know. I think they but probably I, just I started they, looking they, they at the want, place. If they're looking for vengeance. They're not looking for Swearingen. They're looking for us. Well, that's why I'm thinking heading back there tonight. You know, might be dangerous to the to the bar. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to walk into the bar. I figured I was going to go around to the back. Well, I don't think well, you should go alone. Well, so the the upside of the upside, if, if there's going to be an altercation, if it happens in the bar, Swearingen's guys will be helping us. No, no, I don't want there to be an altercation where we're around. Because there's going to be a lot of dead people. I just want to give Swearinger around. a heads up that these gentlemen match the same kind of gentleman that killed uh a posse. Of, the, yeah the kill a posse and also his, two of them. uh one of his girls and a john in his establishment so that none of them get kind of antsy and do anything stupid this is a pub this is ci this is civic protection at this point because a, a whole lot of people are going to die if they do anything stupid right Well, one thing is we can see if they're going to be joining us at the uh, the church meeting tomorrow. I think um, all of us uh, should be thoroughly armed. 
<laughs> I'm looking at you, Christopher. <laughs> Bring Moon Shooter. <laughs> Moonbiter. Um, in the meantime, I mean, if you want to, if you want to loop back, Vance, um, I maybe bring somebody with you and do a quick. Yeah. Um, I let me think, uh, I, let me write an. I'm gonna write a little note. Dan's a friend of mine, so I'm gonna write write Dan a little note. You know, big Dan Lattimore, right? Uh, yeah. All right, let me just write him a quick note. The note's gonna basically say, uh, these, you know, these, you know, please listen carefully to what my friends say. You know, they're they're deadly earnest. And I'll just sign it, you know, Walt Larrabee. And just give this, maybe give this to Dan as you get in. And, and you know, and I'll also say like, you know, I'll just say, listen to these guys as my friends. They're being deadly earnest. That should, that should do it. All right. So if they're, so. If Dan's, they're... Dan's in Swearingen's right-hand man. And he's, he's a pretty tough hombre, as you can probably tell. So. so. So I would say before you guys came and talked to us, I would say dealing with the the mystery and the potential demons on a restless spirit or whatever at my neighbor's house at the Strauss ranch was the highest priority. But obviously these guys coming into town, potentially looking for us becomes a much higher priority for us as far as what we need to do. If you guys are going to go to the bar and there's a potential for something bad to happen, then we should probably all be nearby. Yep. To help. Yeah. But then there's more likelihood that they'll spot us and then stuff will well, more I mean, likely well, eventually they're going to find us. Uh, well, if we alert the sheriff, because well, yeah, we can't tell the sheriff like this. This guy's friend killed, you know, killed all the, you know, one of your deputies, and you know, oh, no, and the, sheriff, the sheriff knows about the unusual nature of the of the slicer. Yeah, he was with us in the mine. <laughs> exactly, but I'm just, but so we want to let him know, but we also want to let him know that that was look how much mayhem one person caused. There's two of them now. Right. So, so Edward, be you, uh, smart. That's all Edward, I'm saying. Edward, you didn't uh -huh. deal with this with us earlier. What's your inclination? You're going to hang with us or you're going to keep yourself apart? Um, I'll hang with you. It's certainly not your fight if you don't want it to be. No, no. It sounds like sounds exciting. Why not? Okay. That's one way to put it. All right. So regardless, I still got to talk to the church tomorrow and got to clear up some of that mess. And of course, I think we should be on high guard if we, you know, get to tomorrow, no problem. You know, if they're going to be, if they're going to interfere. And then I guess we can just see how that goes. So if they force the issue between now and after we talk, after the church meeting tomorrow, then, then we have to react. If they don't, then we can plan. What we but, but we do know we want to heads up the sheriff and swear engines men. So that sounds like what we need to get accomplished, you know, soon. So how you want to do that? And does it need to be done tonight or can it wait till tomorrow morning? Well, for tonight's issues, I think, um, I think I would like to go back and at least alert Swearinger not to do any, Swearinger's boys not to do anything stupid and let the sheriff know. That men like him, like men, men like them, are in town. So let me ask you this: How much, uh, how much, how much exposure to the occult do you think Sawyer Engines had? Because, to the best of my knowledge, he knows some unusual stuff happened in his bar. But does, what do you think? You think he's going to believe you? I believe he will. And I believe we told him what happened what happened originally up at the mine. So this isn't something new to him yeah he's smart he's not going to do anything reckless at least not without planning it through <clears throat> is that aaron clock anyway yes yes <laughs> but i definitely would like him to uh have the forewarning so that nobody does anything stupid so um yeah, we can go check out the, you know, after the church tomorrow, we can definitely go check out this farmstead you're talking about. Because um, even if we are being followed, those gentlemen, I'd like to get them out of town if they are going to follow us. It's a pretty good open area, too. Um, I mean, there's farms and cropland around it, but it's semi-isolated. You know, we could probably get up on the roof. Uh, you know, if, if they want to come after us, there's probably, you know, there's probably worse places to defend, I'd say. 
Yeah. yeah, well, there's also better places to defend, like a place. That's true, where, unless the house, if like the house a place burns where on there's us. other people to help you. I'm not super excited about going off into the middle of the countryside so I can fight something that can kill me. <laughs> if there's a sheriff, if there's 15 other people in town with guns, and you can overwhelm them with firepower, I'd much rather have that fight happen in the town. Or so we don't want to risk going out to the farmstead then? No, we could do that tomorrow. So, I mean, yeah. the, the, the upside of addressing this situation now or in the very, or tonight is we're selecting the time when it happens. If we're, we're waiting for them to come to us, they'll be prepared. Well, who's really sneaky? I mean, he's really good at slinking around in the dark. Maybe they can go with Vance. Gustav, Gustav, are you good at that? Uh, sneaking. Let me see. Uh, sneaking. Stealth. stealth. <laughs> that, that, uh, I, have a stealth, I have a stealth 45. That's, that's pretty good. That's trade. Yeah, I'm pretty sneaky. I got a stealth of 60. All right, very wow. sneaky. All right, well, um, that's not me. Uh, so You're just a pots and pans, man. Just tenderfoot. Uh, I'll be the one. I'll be the one talking to the town tomorrow. I'll be showing, yep. and I'm friends with Big Dan, so I have. It's not my bright. It's not my greatest day, but you know, I I got plenty to offer to Larrabee's Danger Six. Well, look, uh, I'll be more than happy to go with uh, not just one, but two other folk. And I say the rest of us stay here, boarded up, have the place boarded up, and uh. You know, with our shooting irons out till you get back. Well, frankly, I'm interested in seeing what these two folks look like. I'll describe them. I, I was there. Maybe I'll touch them and do my little trick. <laughs> or I can glint. Yeah. Their past. Yeah. How could that go wrong? Yeah, that's nothing bad. For <laughs> Let me count the ways. Well, why don't I take uh, uh, Christopher and Gustav? Because uh, Edward, you look like you're. I don't want to interrupt your learning there on your books. So I yeah, plus you're not you're not actively involved so, uh, yet either. Let, let me let me say this. Let me say this. Just well, I mean, in terms uh, of uh, having let history, me, with let me these just, guys. let me, let me just make right. a point. So so I don't want to be the guy that sits there and does research all the time. While you guys are, I'm looking at my sheet. I'm looking at the number of boxes I'm checking, and it's one or two a session. So yeah, if all the action is going to be happening with you guys, I'm not going to sit there and well, I'm just going to go to the doc's office and wait. So I agree. So, Trust me, action can follow you. Yeah, it can. And, and, so far in, and so far in 25 sessions, it hasn't done a lot of that. So I'd like at this point for us not to split up for the 58th fucking time. Yep. My language. Okay. So, so, you know, let's deal with it. If we're going to deal with it, if we're going to hold up, we'll hold up together. If we're going to deal with it, we're going to deal with it together. If we're going to go talk to, what's his name? We'll talk to him together. I mean, we, we don't have to be all together. We have to be near enough that we can respond to each other. Okay. Well, uh, let's uh -huh. go tell the sheriff first then. All right. So, so we're all going to, all right. Uh, who all has access to their better, their improved non-site arms? Like, for I'm example, Christopher, do you have your exist. rifle with you, or is it I'm back in your room? I'm aware that bullets exist, but the one bullet I had was taken, was, was, was given back. I have a 70 handgun. I'm not bad with a gun. Yeah. It's a lot so better than me. Fight, I'm not afraid to be part of it. Yeah, and All if right. something happens in Likewise. town, I'm better with my with my, uh, yeah. with my my pistols than I am with a rifle. <laughs> this, this, is not yeah. a, this is not a rifle uh, area of engagement. No, this is pistols. And we, All right, well, let's... Uh, and four so shotguns. I really do think, <laughs> from a logical standpoint, if we have to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of them, and frankly, I think we got a really lucky shot and we hit him in the jimmy bag. Twice. So, so there's two of them, and if they could plunge the area into darkness... Assistant. Now, being in a crowd full of people with guns when we're all plunged into darkness might be a bad place to be <laughs> as, the, as the shots start flying. First of all, but, what, time, what time of night is it? Is the sheriff even likely? Is he is he snoring Z's back at his house? I mean, it might be too late for the sheriff to be up anyway. It's a busy Saturday night. I'm sure he's up. Yeah, he's he's probably up. And he's got a prisoner in in the jail, so either him or the deputy will be at the jail cell. No, we don't know the deputy. All right, so you know, know the, the deputy. deputy. We know his name is Liam O'Brien. Well, I mean, we have a you know we've been through some stuff with the sheriff, so I'm just saying right. we have a better. All right, so do we want to lock it up and? Uh, Strap on our guns and kind of make a purposeful yet un, uh, 
unremarkable, immediate let's, yeah, let's hoof go over to the let's sheriff's go, office? Let's go inform the sheriff. I mean, really, I think he's going to be very interested that there's two more of these. So just, just, just for clarity, guys, is the thing that we fought in the mine the same thing that murdered the whore at the beginning? Yes. That's our sense, right? That seems to be what you're saying. Yeah. So that's what we should tell the sheriff then. That, 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 well, that the, thing the that first thing the we can point out is we believe that there are two other gentlemen that are like the original killer because they don't seem right and they have two dead horses. Yeah, and actually, the sheriff might know what that monogram on the saddle is. Yes. About. In fact, he'll certainly know. So probably roust in the sheriff. So the gem is 10, right? Looking at the cold water map. So what's the where's the sheriff's office? Which we would know. So what, what building number is it? Nothing's more than a couple blocks away. Oh, man. I haven't pulled up the map in a while. Hold on. Got a, oh, that list is on my Tuesday night sheet. I I mean I he said the electronic oh, file. You're looking for the sheriff's number. It's uh nine, number nine. Let's write hey, wait, isn't the gem number ten? So the gem is number ten, correct. So they're literally next door. Okay. Yeah. Well, they're, they're that's, right. they're they're right. Right. All right. Well let's uh on commuting top. Let's do our best um was that Zoom towards the horses or away from the horses? Away. Okay. Let's do our best tombstone impression and walk down. I don't know if the gun's drawn, but like all walk together. Somebody light the somebody light the gallows on fire in the background. So so Please. Edward, one of the things that you might want, so so those things don't know about you probably. Right. You so, could go on ahead. Like so if you if you if you walk in next to me, then you're gonna be associated with me. But if you walk in separately, you might be not considered a threat. That might be an advantage. Yeah, just put point that out. Good, good point. We'll do that. I'll go in separately. You want to go ahead? Go ahead. No, no. When we, if we have to go to the tavern, he can go in separately. Yeah. Okay. Right. Got it. And we could send him in in advance to go up to the bartender to say, "Hey, you know, Vance or Walt or whoever sent me. Uh, we got to let Tilly, We got to let uh, Slaringer know something important." Yeah, I could just give him a note to give to Dan. Piece of cake. All right. Well, that doesn't mean we have to walk. I mean, so we could walk on the far side of the street and just it's night. We could try to keep a relatively low profile as opposed to like, you know, walking directly in front of the gem by the horses. You know, we could try to put a little distance between us and them, but let's just let's just do it. Okay. Um you head out the bank, come back the worst thing that can happen. Um, and head to the um, sheriff's office. Uh, not in formation per se, but loose group. Loose group. Uh, I, I guess all uh, whatever radar is up. Yes. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, let's take a look at the. It's like I didn't think they would just walk out into town the same night. Okay, so you uh, start trudging over there. Uh, you round the uh, uh, the Empire Hotel. Uh, boardwalk runs out there, and you get into the street. It hasn't rained often, so or very much in the last several days, so it's pretty dry and dusty. Tap your eyes, man. Um, and you get to. I don't know if you saw if she posted on Facebook. What's that? So, I don't know if she posted on Facebook or anything. Your mic, but Mark. Marie Walsh got engaged by her boyfriend in the army. Cool, yeah, Mark. Can you your mic. There we go. Getting married at point two. I don't know how cool that is. Um, as you come through the street, heading across to the uh, boardwalk uh, that has the gem and the. Uh, uh, Sheriff's office. Uh, office as well. <laughs> uh, everybody, give me a scan roll, please. Everybody. Oh. Hey, everybody. 
99. I don't see anything. <laughs> you beat me. me either. <laughs> just straight make it. Yeah, good thing I have a really good scan because I just straight made it too. Nope. Not by a lot. <laughs> Apparently, I'm looking at whatever you're, uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> look at this. Look at the beautiful. Look at the, uh, look at the Milky moon. Way. Look, look at the, the Milky moon. Way. Is that a gibbous uh. moon, Vance? I, I made a normal success. Normal success? Barely. Yeah. I mean, but I made, it was a normal success, but it was a success. So did we get any hard successes? Nope. Nope. Okay. So the ambush worked. Uh, so you, you, you get to the sheriff's office. Okay. Are we Go in and... Of, are we going to find a bunch of dead people in there? <laughs> head on in and uh, yes. open up the door and head on in. Okay. Who's uh, there? Uh, you see Liam there, uh, feet propped up on the, the desk, sitting in the sheriff's uh, chair. Uh, away. <clears throat> Evening, Water. Liam. <laughs> evening, Liam. Uh, where's the sheriff? Oh, he went home for the evening. Catch a couple hours of sleep. Oh. Well, we've got a problem. A potential problem. A potential problem. In there in the jail cell. He's, he won't be hurting you. Don't worry. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking about some folks in town. All right. Uh, uh, so going to be causing some trouble. Yes, we're going to need the sheriff awake. If you seem to seem that that's fit, sure, sure. Uh, and he uh, says, um, well, would, would one or two of you at least mind staying here, watching over the uh, the culprit here? I'll be more than happy to stay here. Uh. Did we ever turn in our posse badges? Sure, we probably did. Right. We've been back for a couple days, right? Yeah. Um. Well, give me the thin veneer of authority. That's right. The question is, should, should we send somebody with him? And the best person might be Edward, because he doesn't, you know, you're you're not on anyone's radar yet, as far as we know. Or do we just trust him to go by himself? Well, if it's if he gets attacked, one of us is not going to be enough to help. So no, that's, no, that's how we stay together. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, he's by himself. He's he's going to run around and get up, and it's not necessarily suspicious unless they're watching us and they saw us all go in and he leaves a few minutes later. Um, this is what it is. All right. Okay. Um, Good to know you, Liam. <laughs> I call him deputy. It's short, short ca uh, uh, cameo in the in the game. <laughs> so he, Here's your red shirt. Put this on. First. <laughs> that's right. He does happen to wear a red shirt. He, he's great. like the drummer for uh, uh, Spinal Tap. Um. <laughs> okay. Well. Um, so, yeah. Parts. Everybody, give me a listen roll. I will do that with advantage. Oh, just, six. Just and I'm record, good at listening. Helpful. It'd be helpful if one of us made a roll. With I made a critical success. Thank you. I made it. I made a six. I made a ten percent. Nice. I made a success. That's it. Just a success. I am. I've got. I actually also made success. a success. success. Okay. I'm uh, currently listening to the sound of my own awesomeness. Critical. <laughs> I, critical I can success. actually check a skill. <laughs> oh yeah. Let me look at that. <laughs> a hard success. Hard success. All right. Critical success, um, baby. Everybody who made a hard success, um, or better, or better, uh, extreme success, uh, even extreme oh, success. Uh, Give me a check. The hard successes and extreme successes. It, okay. it occurs to you that you no longer hear any music coming from the gem saloon. Oh, that's extreme that, success. Yeah. You hear uh, that was me. Some uh, horse horses uh, rapidly, uh, you know, right riding down the street. Well, the third uh, toward us or away from us. Uh, you have to pause to kind of wait for the tonal differences. Away. Okay. Yeah. Listen. 
There's no sounds coming from the from the gem, and I hear two horses riding away from town. Fuck. That's not good. Oh, that's not good. Uh, God. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, we should... Go outside. Yeah. <laughs> With guns drawn. Yes. Yeah. All right. Important proviso. Guns are already oh, drawn. <laughs> Hammers are already back. Okay. Guns drawn. Hammers back. Uh, you uh, spill out of the front of of uh, the uh, sheriff's office. Uh, again, two year olds left would be the gem saloon. Which way are the horses going? Away. They're going away from. Well, uh, were they going? They they're going away from us. So they're going away one side of town or the other side of town. Could we head back to the saloon and check on it? Yeah, the, the horses you would assume are heading towards what you think of as as the uh, train station. Okay, got it. So they passed by us. Uh, yep. The sheriff's office is number nine, isn't it? Yes, number nine. Train oh. station is one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, the so by the time Walt heard the horses, yeah, they had already passed by the. Uh, uh, sure. Oh, so they probably already went. Or did they already go around number four? They're out of sight, as it were. Well, you just stepped out. Uh, you take a look. People yeah. would like to do a scan or something. Yes, yeah, I am that. looking for two horses, black horses. In the black of the evening, so roll at this advantage. Oh yeah, good point. Uh, Let's see if it gets worse. Oh hey, the first roll was the worst. Good. Uh, I have a success, not a startling success. Five luck. I hit me. I have no. If we, if it was a disadvantage, I would fail so myself. I have keen vision. Does that just mean I make a normal roll? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. I would have had. I oh, know I have the. Big ears. Big let you uh, 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 negate a uh, disadvantage. Listen. No, I had queen. Yeah, keen vision is what I had. Yeah, keen vision. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I make a scan roll. List. A heavy, a hard success. Oh, I succeed. Okay. Um, you all definitely see two horses uh, pacing oh, each it? other very well. Uh, pretty much rounding out um, um, around the uh, uh, corral um, and heading. I mean, they're literally just sort of disappearing from sight. Uh, they are heading. Um, Actually, around that building 55 and heading out uh, west. Are they racing or are they just at a good clip? Riding right. at a very yeah. solidly fast clip. All right, run to the gym. So, uh, yeah. And those of us who didn't see it didn't see anything anyway. Right. Uh, yeah, we should probably. Well, we didn't. We absolutely didn't hear any screams or gunfighting or shooting, right? We yeah, just heard but... it's quiet and horses rode by. You, you right. think if you remember correctly with the first incident, nothing really was heard then either. So. <laughs> Rushing yeah. into the saloon. Well, yeah, I have a friend in there. there. Let's, yeah, get, let's, so yeah, we rush in. Guns okay. drawn. And by the way, it is 923. Okay, you, you. Oh, that's good. Thank you for nice to... um, <laughs> Sounds like you can tell us what we see, and then that's. We get be... to the doors and, and... <laughs> see you next week. <laughs> well, you, you, you yeah. do get to the doors, uh, and literally at the plane of the doors, uh, and it's, the, it's the classic Sloan Sweeney style. Game. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, there is a wall of inky blackness in front of you. Well, I'm down. Uh, okay. I'm out. That's where we're going to end. Looks <laughs> like that's fascinating. Let's explore it. Damn. <laughs> uh, yeah. We could have backup. Um, Thirty-eight mud men. You guys didn't make me put that thing back. Oh yeah. And that—that that is, I think, uh, an appropriate uh, stop. That is a good. That is, that a, is good. a good. Yeah.